Today, we're at Caltech, because in a building over there is a camera that absolutely blows my mind. Now, we filmed at some very high frame rates. We're talking up to about half a million, which is not to be sniffed at. Serious frame rates. Their camera puts ours to shame and does 10 trillion frames per second. That's 13 zeros. For reference, that is 20 million times faster than the fastest we've ever filmed on this channel. And there's not much you can't film with half a million frames a second, but one of those things is the speed of light. Not a bad subject. No, let's get in there. All right. Even the shoe cover technology is cool. I kind of want one of these at home, actually, yeah. just for people. All right, let's go in let's see what this cup is all about. <laughs> nice to meet you. Hello. Nice to see you. How's it going? Good. So what's actually, what are we doing here? This looks all very complicated. Oh, uh, this is the world's fastest camera. Oh, OK. Yeah, it's the world's fastest camera. So there you go. Just as easy as that. How big is the actual camera part? I can show you that. The big box is the camera itself, and here is the optics that we designed to make the thing work. Very cool. So a lot of the times in our YouTube comments, we get asked to film the speed of light, mm -hmm. and I have to always reply to people, letting them know that the speed of light is it's almost incomprehensibly fast, and yeah. even our cameras under a million frames a second will never see anything like that. Is this camera capable of filming the speed of light? Yeah, that's basically what we're going to see. For the example I'm going to show, the light will move about the length of this uh, bottle. In time, how long does it take for light to start here and end here? It takes about 2,000 picoseconds. It's pretty quick. Pretty quick. Yeah. So for the audience, it goes milliseconds, microseconds. Is it nanoseconds? Nanoseconds, nanoseconds picoseconds, femtoseconds. Femto femto yes. So we're on the sort of pico-femto scale with yes. this stuff. Yeah. Uh, we've never done that before, for sure. Yeah, I know. This is completely on another level. So shall we set up the first experiment? Sure, yeah. Start okay, with the bottle? Yeah. Everyone should wear a laser goggles. Oh, OK. Um, so we have good. some. Do I look good? You've got, like, <laughs> side panels in you your You look like glass. you're about you to. Look badass. It looks like you're about to go skiing with a welding torch. <laughs> Just... <laughs> so I assume because we're trying to film light, It'll be useful to turn all the lights off in here, right? Yes. Otherwise, we'll just get... Yeah, you'll get all of ambient light coming Right. In, yeah. OK. So. Let's get ready for lights off. Yeah. Uh, can you hold this? Please? I'll hold this. Uh, yeah. Thank you. I'm Good. excited. I get giddy by this frame rate stuff. We want to see the light propagation from the side, so we need to make sure that the, the light is scattered out of the plane. Okay. If you put the milk molecules inside, then you can see light scattered from the side. So this is a bottle full of water with a bit of milk in. Uh, so I'm going to turn on the laser. So all you do is just move mirrors and lenses around, and yeah, then it goes yeah, to yeah. different areas. Is that a move the laser? The laser is too big. So it's the light hits the bottom of the bottle. So it goes through the bottle. Is it a powerful laser? It's very powerful. It can basically burn any like papers. I will stay away from that. Yeah. So you can see it's glow. So that's cool. So the first thing I'm going to capture is the static image as our wrappers. But today I'm going to try 100 frames per second. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I remember when I was excited when, our, when we started shooting, we moved from 1,000 frames a second to 28,000 frames a second. That was a big jump. OK, so we're pretty much down with the water bottle. OK. I'd like to take a photo of this. So as you can see, we can only see the light itself. We cannot see the bottle and the label on it. Yeah. So if, if finally in the movie we may want to overlap both the uh, the bottle itself and the light. So you like so composite that, a real oh. picture. Yeah, yeah. So you just take a photo on your phone and that can you can do that. Yeah, you can just use a software to overlap these two things. Neat. You're in the photograph. Just photobombing the bottle. <laughs> okay, let's watch back our bottle. Uh, this took eight hours to process, <laughs> during which time I grew a slightly longer beard. I had a haircut as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Right, OK, so what we're seeing here is the... Whoa. <laughs> the bottles that's been comped in, basically. Yeah, so this camera only detects the light itself, which is a, like a bluish laser light, which is why you don't really see anything else other than the light looking like that. And then we comp in the picture of the bottle. In the room with my actual eye, it looked like it was constantly lit up, but here we're able to follow the light moving through the bottle. 
It may not look like it, but this is actually real. It's refracting the photons, so that's why you can see it. But when it's just going through the air, there's nothing to actually reflect the light. So yeah, it's only see. showing up in the bowl. It is interesting. It, it almost looks like a sort of an 80s film effect. It does, doesn't it? It looks like... Like some sort of ghost flying into the room. <laughs> but actually, that is light. No, wait, look at this scale. So every frame seems to be 10 picoseconds. And we're just sort of casually watching this light go left to right through the bowl. But in reality, the light is moving a million times faster than a bullet. A mental subject. Yeah. OK, so we've shot light through milk. Next experiment? Yep. All right. For this experiment, we designed a special a cavity. We call it chaotic cavity. So when light comes in, the cavity the bounce back and forth multiple times by the mirrors surrounding in the cavity. <laughs> You're almost trapping light inside. Yeah, the yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> What's the purpose of this, this uh, egg so, thing? So th this is to create a uh, water vapor surrounding the, the environment so that light scatters out. The same thing like water. Oh, so you there. can sort of see it see a little it. bit. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So this is how the system works. Turn on. All right, let's go do the experiment. How long did it take you to learn to use this? Uh, it's maybe a few months to get used. A few months to get used to it. Yeah, because it's a really complicated system. Yeah, it's really complicated. I hadn't noticed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much down. OK, so this is the chaotic cavity at 100 billion frames a second. <laughs> Just like nothing. Once again, the duration of this video is you can't even get your head around how, <laughs> how short amount of time it is. Uh, it's amazing. When we were in the room, it looked like the whole thing was glowing, but now we can see the individual pulse of light bouncing around this thing. It looks like a weird version of Pong. And this is one femtosecond of laser pulse. So as if you just went like, Oop, with the laser. A femtosecond pulse. Yeah. And if you pause it, you can see it's just, it's like a dot of light. And it's like comped in the shape of the mirrors. Yeah. Into it. I wonder if you could actually build like a big maze to get it around. <laughs> like, you could do like a little maze and try and get to the World's end. fastest maze completion. Yeah. Brrr. Light. Oh, oh, I almost went in the corner there. It's, it is, it's like the DVD uh, yeah. screen saver, isn't it? <laughs> you just want it to go straight in the corner. Nice, nearly. So this one's 100 billion. Yeah. Should we see what 500 billion looks like? All right, so the area is quite small. Yes. So there's no way that we can stand in and be filmed by this camera. But alternative solution, little mini figurines of us. Wait. Why is mine? Oh, for goodness sake. Right. Again, it's every sort of time. Put them, put them on there. Flipping heck. All right. So in this experiment, instead of shooting light from the side, yeah. I change the beam path to bounce back this mirror, this mirror, and uh, use a concave lens to expand the beam to shoot at the angle. So this is more about scattering light on the surface of the yes. figurines? Yes. You're sweeping across the, the surface of okay. the figures. Because yeah. we're obviously not see-through, so. Yeah. <laughs> So this is the static image of the two figures. Uh, now I'm uh, doing 500 billion frames per second with the two by two coding. So two by two on a casual half trill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we're pretty much down with this one. This is 500 billion frames a second of our, our little figurines with a resolution of 549 by 439. The footage is played back at 20 frames a second, therefore it is slowed down by a factor of 25 billion times. I do like that I was able to successfully photobomb this picture. I like how it shows up on your nose so much. All right, I knew you'd say something about that. It does, it really <laughs> it does, does get caught by my nose, doesn't it? Yeah. It is interesting to see the light scatter on the surface of something as opposed to go through yeah. so the again, body. All they've done here is pretty much comp in our bodies with the light. So yeah. the camera would have got this blue light and they've just taken a picture and comped in us and matched it up to where the light hit. You look miserable in that. <laughs> you look like I've just said something awkward and you're like, oh, ugh. Should we do these poses? Yeah, sure. And you can see at the, on the time scale, it's a much slower progression of picoseconds. Because we're filming because it we're faster. Half a trillion frames a second. All right, that's 500 billion done. Child's play. Child's play. Let's crank it up. All the way? Yep. All right, let's do 10 trillion frames a second. So, Peng, we're at a different camera now, is that yeah. correct? And this one could do up to 10 trillion frames a second. Yeah, yeah. 
So this is the 10 trillion frames per second. That's the maximum speed we can do. Uh, so here we have a sample which contains diluted milk. So about a few millimeters long. So that's all that the camera is looking at is a few millimeters long. Yeah, so that's how long the light propagates within 30 picosecond. OK, wow. So here is the same software that we use to capture the image. So for this one, we're allowed to keep the lights on? Okay. Because we are doing ultra-fast images so within a very narrow time scale, there's minimum amount of light that comes through the, the ambient light. In comparison to the powerful laser, laser that's going yeah. through. Yeah, because yeah. it's all relative, I suppose. Yeah, much brighter. All right, cool. Yeah. So and this is how it works. So this is a much smaller scale because we're using a higher frame rate, capturing a very much smaller amount of uh, space and time, yes. essentially. All right. This is the light traveling through the milk vial at 10 trillion frames a second. This is the reason we came here. Yeah. So cool. So on, on, the, on the bottle video, the light seemed to be going the same speed. But then you've got to remember that the scale of this is much smaller. So this is one millimeter, it says here, is the distance, whereas before it was an entire bottle, which shows you that we're actually recording light traveling through such a small amount of space. And it's so slow now that uh picosecond has a decimal place to the hundredth femtosecond. That's uh, blowing my mind for a start. And Peng turned on the laser, I didn't see anything at all. But now we can actually see how it moves. But on this scale of time, if we fired a bullet through this frame, it would take years to go from one side to the other. And light has just gone, yep. That really puts it into perspective as well, doesn't it? I just feel like no human should ever have seen this. It's like you're looking at the base of the universe. I've heard that in future, the Caltech team actually intends to increase the speed up to one quadrillion frames per second. It's a bit mind blown, to be honest. We have to leave now and go back to our old measly hundreds of thousands of frames a second. Measly, pathetic. Hundreds of thousands. Well, thank you very much, Peng, for okay, thank you. showing us your amazing yeah. kit. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Learned a lot. Yeah. Well, to me, that's some of the most mind-blowing footage ever. I mean, visually, it's, it's just a blob going from left to right. Yeah. You, but to know that that's light. I would say it was actually one of the most mind-blowing things yeah. that you've seen. Well, I feel very accomplished. Hopefully, you enjoyed watching light move through the air in slow-mo. Feel free <laughs> to check out other episodes from Planet Slow-Mo and join us in part two. We'll be learning a lot more about how this camera works. You can subscribe too if you want. We'd appreciate it. Still not sure I'll be able to understand it after part we'll, two as well. We'll do our best. All right.